And on field, the microscopic margins between pain and glory in winner take all rugby emphasised in Marseille last weekend when Double Leinster knock. went down to La Rochelle in the final play of the game. So, boys, as we have our first stoppage for the scrummage, what drama awaits in this Irish knockout derby? I hope a lot, Robbo. Not a great start by Peter Romani. 68% of Ulster's tries have started from lineouts this season in the league. Off goes Stuart McCluskey, making those gain line metres. Over 55% of McCluskey's carries have made over two metres through contact. It shows how effective he is with the ball in hand. And now it's Mike Haley playing superbly this season. The man who scored two tries against Cardiff. Munster almost pouncing on the break. Would you believe Rob Herring is... 31 tries now for Ulster and of course most of them have begun from positions like this taken by O'Connor well, can they get their shape right Munster will have worked I'm sure this week on defending against the Ulster ball at once we can we can come Rob Herring hoping the men in front of him can do the job they are paid to do here and they're getting a little bit of momentum they're getting a penalty advantage as well Cooney wants the ball finds McCluskey uses that strength and step again and here is Cooney and right in the Moore coming into the line dump tackle by offside. two monster defenders but the offside they come back for Never back and it's side. right underneath those posts as Henderson and Kendallin come together one thing I noticed in the Toulouse game Quinny was that Kendallin suffers no man as Ulster go quickly nobody had an eye on the ball and Ulster were sniping shortly to score the try the man who was watching though most importantly of all was Jack Piper as John Cooney took his chance but really sharp by Ulster and then the conversion from John Cooney what a start for him the Centurion for Ulster scores all seven of Ulster's early points. Yeah, they're stuck on the line, aren't they? You saw France work a move like this during the Six Nations when Intermac was at out half. Dupont was at nine then. Here is Murray. Look, oh, again, it's really scrappy from Munster. Ball going to ground inside the Ulster 22. Desperate lack of accuracy as Jean Klein carries the ball. Five times cap Irishman, though born in Kruger's Dorp in South Africa. Murray, pass accurate now. Off goes Chris Farrell. Had such a good game and defeat against Leinster. A lot of good carries, beat plenty of defenders. Joey Carberry can do that too. We all know that. Scannell carries, carries well too. Puts Murray onto the front foot. Archer comes round the corner, but he gets driven back. Good tackle by Warwick. Kendallin. In comes Ray with a tackle. Ulster's turnover king with 19 this season. Gavin Coombs assisted on the latch and by right. Witcherly. More like it from Munster. Murray looks for Archer. Munster going All direct. Side was it, number four. Is this the way to beat this Munster side? Farrell, another man well over 17 no, stones. Six. They've got a mighty sized yep. midfield of Munster with Farrell and Dialendi. Second advantage for Scannell. No, leave it Another off. advantage no. to Munster. Murray plays it beyond Coombs and here is John Klein Coombs goes in Coombs goes through does Coombs get to the line so Leave close on. and that might be the weakness of this Ulster side defensively if you go hard and straight and now Munster we'll plunder off the foot underneath the posts if it's not a try we're going back for two advantages that's more like it Quinny So hits the foot, goes up, so unless you can see a clear knock. John Klein, the try scores, um, and Jacko Piper saying the ball came off his foot. Yeah, Look, Ulster, one, two men in the breakdown, maximum. It's a white wall all the time, but they just get up and they fold around the corner. Stuart McCluskey has delivered so consistently for Ulster this season. O'Connor and Ulster have let the ball slip again. And it's Joey Carberry plays the ball through for Keith Earls to chase. John Cooney puts in 
the sliding centre half challenge. Brilliant by John Cooney on his 100th appearance for Ulster tonight. You could just see him as soon as the turnover was there. He was on his bike. He could see that the kick was going to be put through by Joey Carberry. And Keith Thurls tried to nudge it on himself. But excellent cover there. Oh, Good yeah, football yeah. and skills. There were 17 offloads, would you believe, against Leinster? Though they did lose the game 35 25. Damien Dialendi gets away. Conley outside him. Ulster having to scramble fast Release to cover the ground. Ball. Murray Coombs, brilliant, Archer, has he got the pace to make the line? No, the tight head is not, Murray, foul inside for Cooney, Ulster in all sorts of trouble here, great physicality from Munster, Healy, O'Mahony, Corby, brilliant, Robert Balakoon, he had to read that perfectly, and my goodness, did he deliver in defence for Ulster. What a read by Robert Balakoon. Just simple hands. Oh, it was nearly away, Quinny. He nearly got it away and regathered it. Well, Ulster have won their last two URC fixtures since they lost to Munster in April. Ulster's ho only home defeat that was in the championship. Lovely hands by Hume to Balakoon. Here's Moore for McElroy. McElroy's almost through. Oh, that is glorious rugby. Sleek, slippery clinical as they find the fire breaks in that monster defence a brilliant try straight off the training park Rob Balakoon, the man of the moment he stopped a certain try and then he's just created one well, that's why this Ulster back line has been the, the talk of the town talk of many towns this season because they can produce spectacular rugby like that Cooney to Ray Kendall brings him down. Cooney, Billy Burns, now James Shum outside Balakun. It goes to Moore. And Stuart Moore, does he get the grinding? That's the question. Well, As Ulster again look for the width Morris. and the pace they have on the flanks. Yes, if there's no separation, that's a try. And that's what Marius van der Vest Hazen is looking at the TMO. I think it's the other angle we need. I think it's the angle. That, that angle looks like he's definitely put pressure From on. that angle, we cannot see any clear separation. And there's grounding. And there's the grounding. So I overturned the on-field decision and awarded try. That's correct. Thank you. Can you listen to the crowd? Virtual silence, but they can celebrate that try as Ulster extend that lead to 19 points to 7 good score line to protect O'Connor's take Cooney to Burns and now McCluskey and Hume what a line from Hume he's got support from Timothy and Timothy is away here for Ulster is that the knockout punch in this knockout round from Nick Timothy is 8th try of the season in the two competitions could be the most important of them all. Well, John Cooney looking very focused. Big score I know. Try from Jack O'Pair. Casey. Uh, Hume came up out of the line. I think he was considering the intercept. Now he's got to chase back defensively. He's not brought down. So he's able to create some space for himself and the rest of his defence. Marcus Ray. Gavin Coombs does well puts the shoulder in hard what's it yeah Cooney oh it's Charles Stein it's going to be tried for Coombs is it Gavin Coombs on his comeback after injury he stayed so sharp and alert watch the right elbow here From the previous angle, it looks like the ball clearly separates from the forearm before he grounds it. That's correct. You okay. can overturn your on-field decision from try. It's a knock on red. And it's in goal, so it's goal line dropout. Yeah, that's correct. No try. <laughs> and boys, the, those are those microscopic moments. For Stuart Moore, it was literally a millimetre, and millimetres on that occasion too. Barrels at the front of the line out. Oh. 
Peter Mahoney takes it, Farrell joins the drive, so too does Dialendi. So they bring about 33 stones to the power brokers of the pack. Advantage to Munster, can they go all the way here? Ulster struggling to defend this. Munster keep power driving. Casey's going to have to use it. In they go low. Ulster hold them out. Casey, Keith Earls! What a brilliant finish by Keith Earls. Kept the ball in his right hand. Threw his body in the air. And that looked like a classic Earls finish. And is that the beginning of the fight back against Ulster? Carberry trying to draw it in. Dead giveaway that. Here's Balakoon. Runs into Craig Casey and also Ben Healy. Yeah, ball down, play on. Nudges him out of the way. Down. Casey responds against Cooney, and that's great work by the monster replacement scrum half. And Ulster it is. Who get the penalty for not releasing. And the player who comes up grasping the ball almost a bursting point is the captain Ian Henderson. Reception. He got a heavy knock on the shoulder. What a replacement to come on. Great night for Cooney, wasn't it? 100 cap and he played really, really well. Brilliant by the seven. Klein back for Carberry. And it's another knock on it. And away goes James Shoon. Trying to punch the hand off in. Advantage is there. Stoke on. McElroy and now Rob Herring in that wide channel. Stuart Moore comes in, counter rock by Peter O'Mahony. Ulster just about hanging on to the ball for Mullendu O'Toole. Nathan Doak exploring the blind side. Now sucking in those red shirts. There may eventually be space on this side. If Ulster can be patient through the faces, Munster desperate to get their hands on the ball. The breakdown, throwing the bodies in there. Lovely tip from Henderson to Timoney. Superb leg drive from Timoney. Both available. Don't the Burns. Is this the moment for Hume? Hume rolls his way the line. But does he get it onto the grass in the Kingspan? Yes, he does. Another Derby Day diamond from Ulster. You're losing your voice, Rob. We're talking about James Hume. He is that good. So many good words you can say about him all season and tonight. He has delivered. Chris Fowle with a 13 jersey on his back for Monster. He has played him off the park tonight. Absolutely off the park. Go and Nathan Doak taking over those kicking duties. 36 12. Can you believe that scoreline? Turning the ball. Anderson takes Doak. Billy Burns, here is McCluskey, Robert Balakoon, another one of those scrapbook moves by Ulster. Balakoon looks for support. Oh, he's, he's still going, showing great muscularity. Munster trying to haul him off the ground to win the turnover. Yes, and they've done it. Yeah, they do well to hold him up one super. What a line, what pace. Lovely pass again. I thought he was going to back himself on the outside there. He saw Keith Earls and just hesitated. To bring him down, Jeremy Lockman. Good little pass inside for Thomas O'Hearn. And away goes Jason Jenkins, the monstrous South African. Six foot eight, 20 stone. Monster of a man down injured. The matter of space on the outside. Dialendi throws the pass for David Barron. Can he get past Stuart Moore? No, no he got way. through Madigan. Casey carrying again is Jason Jenkins. Casey, good tackle by Treadwell. Play the ball. Casey is Barron standing off. No, Tool and Timoney. Making those tackles around the corner, they come again using Jenkins once more. Casey tries to do what Mike Haley did against Leinster, sniping around the right through that little narrow channel on the edge of the rock. 
Campbell. No, it's all right. John Andrews tackle. No. Closing in on the final ten minutes, and surely too much for Monster to do here. Even if Dean McBarren can get there, Monaghan prevents him from scoring. But Keith Earls will get in for Monster. Their second try. They're going to need a lot more than that in a very short space of time. But it's a start. We've seen some really great ones. You think back to the Wasps ones in the Wasps game, the Champions Cup. There's been some highs, but not enough. And going out in the quarterfinals again makes it a really negative end for Johan van Graan. Release! Lost it. Diolandi with a carry. And Kendallin. White never back on side. Offside against Ulster. Casey thrown on his belly. Gets the pass away somehow. Farrell goes round the outside. Is there a, a try at the end here for Mike Haley? Dipping and diving and hot scotching. But John Get Andrew makes the tackle. Still on that advantage. Casey... Round that blind side for Carberry. Get him back on side off the break. Will come. Scunnel Witcherly takes. 77 and a half minutes gone. Now Scunnel. Is it once? Looking to put a little bit of tinsel on the scoreline, but that's all it's going to be. Healy nope. for Farrell. Oh, intercepted. McElroy screams away, didn't quite have the pace. Stuart Moore on a hat trick. And Ben Healy is back for Munster. Well, there's players all over the field. Kenlan mashes the ball straight back to Ulster. What was he thinking about? And McCluskey, look, I wish you could see a wide shot of the entire pitch no, to see where no, all the players no. are. Every mistake and every response by Ulster being no. cheered by this almost full Kingspan Stadium. Not quite a sellout. He's got it. First Henderson left. goes in, steals the ball. Brilliant by Henderson. And the clock is in the red. And that will be that. And Ulster march forward to the semi-finals. And listen to the noise around this stadium. They deserve it, Robert. Brilliant. They executed so well. Really punished Monster when they made those mistakes tonight. You said it, Stephen, about James Hume. Brilliant. Some great touches. Balakoon, Stuart Moore, two tries for him. Really tactically got it right. I think early on, Monster punched a few holes around the fringes. Couldn't get the scores and the, with the territory they had early on in the game. and their back line was brilliant, sublime, led by that man. Well, in the end, Munster have been eviscerated by Ulster here at the Kingspan. Some really sparkling rugby, especially from the back line, who had some golden balls.